everyone. My name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the US, which is midday in Australia or 1 a.m. if you're in the UK. Remember, if you miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premiere event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific time in the United States, which is 9 a.m. in Australia or 10 p.m. in the UK. Hope all you guys and girls are well. We are going to continue working on the new model we're creating in 3D Studio Max. Um, I haven't decided exactly what the design is going to be yet, but we're getting bits and pieces together to get it ready for me to put all together into one final rotunda terrace type object. Uh, we've been using photogrammetry to create a couple of the pieces that we're going to be using in the final model. So if I jump straight into Max, uh, we have this little urn here that I'm going to be placing inside the rotunda. And we have the rotunda itself. Now I think I called these Monsterias yesterday. They're not Monsterias, they're called Staghorns. <laughs> so, my apologies, they're Staghorns. That's what the um, design is based on for the top of the column here. All right, and yesterday we were working on this little um, piece of ironwork, decorative ironwork, which I'm going to place in the middle because I'm going to put a pond in here for something a bit different. Uh, do remember though, if you've got any questions or anything you're not sure about, please feel free to pop into chat and ask me. If you just want to pop in and say hello, that's always welcome. But if all you want to do is watch, that's completely fine. Okay, let's uh, let's concentrate on what we've been doing over here for this little piece of ironwork, I think. I'm just going to isolate these pieces. Just makes it easier for us to work on it. So we have the ring around the top. I'm going to duplicate that just by holding down the shift key and dragging. So we can put a ring around the bottom. And I think we need to make our ring a little bit bigger. I don't want it to be too thick though. A bit thicker than the one at the top though because it's going around the base. It should probably be okay. Um, I might just extend the bottom of the, the actual uh, decorative railing in the middle a little bit so I'm going to select the polys along the bottom, if I can find them. I'm going to make sure I have them all selected. Yes, that looks fine. And I'm just going to pull them down a little bit because I want them to extend just a little bit beyond the, um, the edge of that loop. Might even go a little bit more. So that should be good. Okay. This is all well and good, but this loop is too, it's got a really uh, hard edge on it. So we need to soften that up. And to do that, um, I did install the Quad Champer plugin. I remembered to install it this morning. I'd forgotten to put it back when I reinstalled my operating system. So it's all back and good to go. We might just work with the champer though, I think. Let's pull that back. Move it up slightly. I just want to get rid of that really hard edge. Uh, 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 along here, I just want a softer edge. I'm just going to go into two iterations. And pull back a little bit on the tension. That should be good. We've got a nice soft edge now. Um, I'm going to copy that modifier and apply it to the bottom ring. And that's good. Okay, let's uh, UV map them while we're at it. So I'm going to send that over to Unfold uh, Rhizom UV. I keep calling it Unfold 3D. 
Uh, actually, I need to uh, collapse it to an edit poly first. And let's do our automatic uh, unwrap here on this. I'm just going to also turn on uh, checkerboard. And that looks fine. Let's send that back. And let's do the same with the bottom one. Uh, now, do remember everyone, today is my last stream for 2018, and uh, then I'll be back on January 7. So, I'm going to go and visit my sister and my brother for Christmas. And again, that looks fine, let's send that back. Let's get out of isolation mode. Okay, let's attach, will we attach them? We won't attach them yet. What I might actually do is I might uh, just group them for the time being. I think that might be better. So I'm going to select all of those. Deselect those. And we'll just group them. We'll call it... Um, Pond Ironwork. Android Lust, it's good to see you, buddy. Hi. It's good to see you, Android Lust. And remember, I was just saying um, today's the last stream for 2018, and then I'm back on the 7th of January, which will be a Monday. Uh, so just reminding everyone that today's the last stream, and it's good to see you're here for the last stream of 2018, Android Lust. Okay, so we've um, pretty much done all I need to do for this piece of ironwork. I didn't want to go overboard with design because the temple itself is quite ornate at the top anyway. Uh, so I want to keep it quite simple for in, inside of our pond area. Well, thank you, Android Lust. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing my sister and brother and their three children each. Should be fun. The kids are good value. Um, and I only get to see my sister and my brother usually about once a year, which is at Christmas time, so... Christmas, New Year. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, let's let's move this inside of our uh, of our little rotunda. I'm just going to go into isolation mode. I just want to select these um, bases so that I can position this. Uh, pond area correctly. All right. And I forgot one. I would have forgotten one, wouldn't I? Jump out of isolation mode. I forgot two, not just one. <laughs> Come on, Max, let me select it. Why you do this to me? Look at that, Max won't let me select it at all. It's the strangest program sometimes. There we go. <laughs> Come on, Max. You see, it can, it'll let me select the top column, but it refuses to let me select. When I go to change keys to actually do a multi-selection, it um, freaks out. That's okay. We can get by with one less. Oh, it's already there. That's good. Strange, very strange. Anyway, let's jump into the top viewport. And let's get this ironwork positioned around the center. I'm just going to go into flat shading too because uh, the, the shadow is throwing me off. So 
So yes, they're, they're not called monsterias, those decorative pieces at the top of the column, like I said yesterday. They're called um, staghorns. <laughs> I think I call them monsterias. I must have monsteria on the brain. Okay, it's about the center there. Let's have a look here. Just going to pop that down just until the, the, the spikes of the um, ironwork go inside of the, uh, the base. But I do want to see a little bit of the spikes at the bottom, so... So that should be good. All right, now we need to uh, we need to just do a few modifications on the base here. First things first, I'm going to turn on edged faces. Let me close that down. We don't need you for the moment. I'm going to I'm, I'm going to keep the cylinder there for the moment. I'm going to put an edit poly on top of it. And we're going to select, uh, how many do I want? We might select those two, I think. I'm going to deselect the base. Again, Max is being very temperamental. There we go. All right, that looks good. Let us do an, an extrude, I think. Um, now I'm going to do this on face normals, local normals, I should say. Maybe out to about, probably about there. Should be good. Let's commit to that. All right, that's good. Let's jump into the top viewport and let's um, add a cylinder. And I want the cylinder to, to just touch the edges of that uh, bottom, uh, what am I calling it, the bottom ring that we have around our ironwork. I might, might go a little bit bigger, but I'm just going to jump into the 3D view to have a look. Probably that's okay. I think that should be okay. Alright, so let us do a boolean. So we select our base, we'll go into compound objects. Standard boolean should be fine. I'm going to do a subtraction. I'm going to pick that central ring. Uh, now I'm just going to collapse everything down to an edit poly. So we have our pond inside of our ironwork. Um, we may make the pond deeper when we get the base of the terrace on, just depending on how high I make the base. But we can look at that after we've got the rest of it put together. Okay. I don't want to go full screen there. What I want to do now is send this over to Unfold 3D and UV map it. Uh, let's again go with this one. Let's check out UV mapping. That looks fine. Let's send it back. Let's jump out of isolation mode. 
Oh, that should be good. Let's just do a quick save, just in case, because you never know. You guys up to anything interesting for Christmas? Over Christmas, New Year break? Doing going anywhere? Doing anything? Just going to have a food coma as everybody else, like everyone else? Everybody overeats at Christmas, but you're allowed. You're allowed to overeat at Christmas time. Um, now what I'm going to do, I think, is... I think I want to put like a, a border around the bottom of the, um, of the ironwork. Android Lust says, I want to try to make a Christmas model. Oh, cool. That's a very good idea. Make a Christmas model, 3D model. I don't think I've ever made any Christmas 3D stuff. Sounds like an excellent idea. Always fun making uh, anything in 3D and doing it now that we're in the Christmas period to a Christmas theme. Sounds like a great idea. Android Lust says, I already have a ton of stuff I want to finish, so it may not happen. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I get where you're coming from, Android, last time the same. I have all these wonderful ideas of things I'd like to model up, but um, it gets pushed to the back of the, of the, of, of the log, work, work log. I'm backlogged of work, so never mind. One day, one day I'll get a bit more free time and do, do the stuff that I always want to do. Uh, that's not true. I get, I get a chance to make stuff I want anyway um, when I'm not working on stuff at the studio or doing commissions for people. I do get some free time to make the stuff that interests me. Well, this for interest, this is my, for, for my store, so it's not for any client. Okay, so what I want to do, I think, here is I'm going to go back into isolation mode. And I'm going to jump into spline mode and throw down a circle to about that big. Now it's disappeared because it's underneath of the um, the base here, so I'm just going to lift it up above so I can check my size. Yes, I know, we've all got stuff we need to finish. Well, that's good though. You can never do too much 3D stuff. I'm just going to reduce the size of this just a little bit. I want it to be just a little bit bigger than the other circle, the cutout circle. Maybe a little, there, yeah, that should be good. Okay, let's just move that off to the side, jump out of isolation mode. Let's move it off a, a little bit more so it's not interrupting this circle and I'm just going to move this over as well. Now it's been a while since I've done this so bear with me if I, if I get it wrong the first time. Um, what I want to do here is what I've, I've created a shape and I created that shape just using uh, just using shapes here, the, the line tool under the splines. So it was created with a spline that I've just extruded a little bit. Uh, Android Lust says, I was making a nice scene last year. The deadline was the 25th and I couldn't do it in time, so I ditched the project. <laughs> That's fair enough. Listen, if, you're taking con if you do contract work, um, you've got to be careful sometimes because sometimes in a contract it stipulates a deadline and you've got to meet your deadline or you don't get paid. Well, they might want their money back. Um, but if you can't make the deadline, you can't make the deadline. It's as simple as that. Yep. And, you know, a lot of clients, though, if you do contract for people and you say, I'm going to have it for you by this date, they're, they're understanding most people. I mean, if, so long as it's not, you know, months and months after the, the due date, they'll give you extra time. At least that's what I find. And, but you've just got to be careful if you do contract work because it's all written in a contract. So, um, so they could, uh, come at you and say I want it now or you didn't fulfill your contract so you know all, all that sort of stuff you're getting paid by for a contract generally though with my contract work I don't stipulate a due by date that's just to cover myself so I don't say to the client I'll deliver it on this date uh, I, I usually with my contract stuff stipulate in the contract that um, 
this is what I'm going to do for you and this is how many revisions of, of each step that I'll let you do. So basically, I usually do two revisions at each stage depending on what the work is. So two and two revisions means I'll go, the, the client can change it twice, only twice though. But I, I generally never stipulate a, a date that I'm going to be finished by because it's always wrong. You know, you can do your best to make sure you, you get everything right but there's always going to be a time where despite your best efforts at guessing, you're going to be wrong. Particularly in programming, programming and design, design as well, but programming particularly as well, because there's problems, you can run into problems you just don't anticipate. I'm just going to scale this down. Now I've got to try and judge how wide I want this. I like to scale it back just a bit more. Android Lust says, uh, "If it was con, if, if it was contracted, I would have would have I would have had to take more take it more seriously. Knowing me, I probably thought of the idea a few days before the twenty fifth. <laughs> okay, yeah. If it's your own stuff, then yeah, it doesn't matter. If you don't get it done, you don't get it done. It's no big deal. Or if you don't, if you don't, if you're not feeling it anymore, like you know, you start a model." And maybe, you know, after you're working on it and you're halfway through, you decide you don't really like it anymore, you don't want to work on it anymore, then don't work on it anymore. Nothing's ever wasted. Even if it's never finished. Okay. Now let me see if I can remember how I do this now. Uh, we're in Edit Poly. I'm going to select the faces here on one side. Um, and I want to go to uh, extrude along spline. I'm going to pick the spline, and you can see what it's doing here. It, it just doesn't have to follow the circle so long as it follows it, the shape. Um, I'm just going to up the segments quite a bit so we get a nice smooth circle. Let's go to 64. Now I'm noticing it looks like the um, looks like we may be inverted on our verted, on our polys. We can look at that in just a second though. There we go. Now we've flipped them so we're looking at it correctly. I don't want to taper it. I don't want to twist it. I don't want to rotate it. I'm going to check that it is circular and we don't have any uh, little bumps. I could probably up it a little bit more than 64. I'm going to up it until we just before we meet here. That should be good. All right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete that inner, po uh, inner face here. And delete that interface here. I'm going to select those two edge loops and just bridge them. I'm just trying to work out what it's done here. It's going to go back and undo that for a sec. I think it's just the smoothing uh, that's the problem. Let's check.
It was just the smoothing groups. It needed to have a smoothing group assigned to it. Okay, so now we have this uh, decorative border piece, which is what I, I want to place this around the um, the pond underneath of the rail. Uh, so again, I'm going to go back and go into isolation mode. Let's jump into the top viewport. Let's get it positioned. I'm just going to re, um, re just move the pivot to the center. It's easier for me to move. It's very quiet in chat today. Where's Smokeberry Barbecue and where's Sniper Echo? Where is my mod? That's okay. It's Christmas time. Everybody's busy. I get it. I get it. They didn't want to be here to say goodbye to me on my last day for 2018. That's that's cool. But you're here, Android Lust. That's all that matters. And I do appreciate it. I'm just going to move that down so we're just touching our base. Maybe just into a, in our base just a little bit. Uh, I'm going to move this railing up a little bit because I want to see those spikes at the bottom. Android does says they might not realize the time. <laughs> That's true. They should though. They've been, my stream never changes my stream time. That They know I'm always here at, um, at 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. But it, it's Christmas. I mean, you know, everyone's busy at Christmas. They're at Christmas shopping, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I get that. Okay, so this is just a little decorative border that sits underneath of the rail around the pond. Just just to add a bit more interest to the to the um to the pond area, more than anything. Um, but I think I might chamfer it a little bit. So again, I'm going to jump into isolation mode. Uh, I did install the like I said uh, quad chamfer plugin. That we were talking about yesterday, uh, I said I'd, I, I I owned it, and, but I hadn't installed it when I reinstalled my operating system. But I did reinstall it this morning. Having said that, I'm probably not going to use it. I'm just going to use the standard chamfer here because that's all I really need for this uh, this model. Don't you, don't you? Oh, <laughs> if Max crashes on me, I'm going to be so annoyed. So annoyed. Don't you crash on me, Max. Ah, there we go. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. See, this is a problem when you turn off uh, automatic save because you guys know I hate having that glitch when I'm working when the program is saving automatically in the background. Do I turn it off on everything? Wow. Um, you know, just... I was going to say... <laughs> dodged a bullet, I know. And I'm thinking to myself, will I, will I delete this chamfer? Save the project and then re-add it. It might be safe. It might be safer. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to delete that modifier. I'm going to do a quick save. I think I did save it, but you know, you never know. Never, never hurts to save more often anyway. Um, I can't talk. I'm going to check how many polygons this um this is. Usually, when that happens, it means it's a really high poly object. Uh, not all objects, the selected object, it's not that high. It's not, you know, it's, it's about 92,000 polys. <laughs> um, okay, we've saved it, so that's cool. Let's add that chamber again. Next, we'll take a little while to think about it, but it should get there. You know, I've done no Christmas shopping yet. I've got to buy for uh, six kids. So my brother and my sister have three children each, so I've got to go, out and plus my brother and my sister, I've got to buy for them as well. Christmas gets so expensive. Man. 
Okay, let's pull that champer all the way down to zero. Max is really having a problem. Come on, Max. I might try the quad champer plug-in. It might be more performant. You're not lying. I know it does. It gets incredibly expensive. Incredibly expensive. Gonna go to a point one. Just this outside edge here is the one that I want to soften up just a little bit. Android Lust says I need to finish my Christmas shopping. Yeah, well I, I need to start mine. <laughs> so you're ahead of me already, Android Lust. I still need to start my Christmas shopping. Let's go to zero point five here on the tension. And kids can be really hard to buy for, particularly when they're not your own, you know what I mean? I've got to rely on my brother and my sister to tell me what sort of stuff uh, they're, in, they're into, what they're interested in. Beck, it's good to see you, Beck. How are you? Always good to see you, Beck. Or Expect Station. How's it going? You, you good? How's the, um, the new studio and stuff coming? Alright, that should be fine. I just want to soften up that edge just a little bit. So now I can collapse that stack. All good? Yeah, no, I'm good too. Um, yep, I'm just, just talking about Christmas shopping because I haven't done it yet. I haven't done any of it. I'm, I've got to go and see my brother and my sister for Christmas, so... I have six kids and... Four adults to buy, to buy for because my sister and her husband and my brother and his wife, as well as those three kids each. So expensive. You haven't done yours yet either, Beck? Well, I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> Android Lust has, has already started there, his, so I, I don't feel so bad if you haven't started yet either. I always leave it to the last minute. Always, always, always. It's never a good thing. Oh, well. Never mind. Uh, let's send this um, this base over to uh, Ryzen UV and UV map it. You know, yeah, I was saying buying for children that aren't your own is uh, always difficult to know what they what exactly they like. So I generally rely on my brother and my sister to tell me what sort of stuff their kids are into. Just waiting for Ryzen here to pack our UVs. Let's go into checker mode. That should be fine. Let's send that back. Okay, so that's UV'd and ready for when we take it into Substance Painter and then Mari. You never know what to buy people, uh, Android Lust? No, I don't either. It's always stressful is the right word I think it's always stressful trying to work out what to buy people because you don't want to buy them something you know they don't want um, and you generally got to spend the whole day running around like a headless ch chook or chicken trying to find stuff for people that you know that they're going to like okay so we've cut the pond out we've put the right iron work in we've UV mapped that so that's all that's all cool um, what do I need to do now? We still have to work on the actual terrace, the shape of the terrace. I haven't worked that out yet, so <laughs> we won't tackle that today because I, I want to play with shapes in Max to come up with the design that I like. But I don't want to do that until I've got all the bits and pieces ready to put together. Uh, so I do need to do some more photogrammetry on... Uh, I want to put... Uh, it's like this statue. I want to put statues either side of the... Um, of the stairs and I'm thinking four stairs so we'll have um, a set of stairs here one at one at each end basically so two on that side and two on that side 
and I want to have these decorative statues sort of at the bases of these stairs. That's sort of where I'm going at this stage. Uh, but we ha I haven't created that yet. I need to do some cleanup work on this piece of photogrammetry here in ZBrush. I could do that. We cleaned that one up already. And that's UV mapped, so that's cool. That's UV mapped. Actually, let's do some. Um, let's just do some hard edge removal on a couple of these pieces. I think. So let's start with this one. Throw down a chamfer. Pull back on the tension a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Makes this chamfer can be really weird sometimes. Now you'll notice I'm, I'm doing it on the entire object here, so... Generally you'd want to pick the uh, edge loops to do chamfer on. Uh, Beck says, how, how poly intensive is the photo scan stuff once you've been able to fix it up? Um, well, if we jump back and look at the uh, this, let's look at this for example, because this is um, this is a photogrammetry object that we did some cleanup work on. So initially this was 1.5 million polygons. Uh, we took it into ZBrush just to do some um, some cleanup on the mesh because it was a little bit uh, noisy from the photo. So we smoothed some parts of the mesh in ZBrush and then what I did was I put a pro optimizer on it which I believe took us down to 153,000 polys. Now I could have taken it even further, that, that, that's without losing any detail. So from one and a half million which is the default the default poly count on most um, photogrammetry models that you're going to get We've taken it to 153,000 polys. Um, I could have reduced that by half again though if I really wanted to. But because this is not going into a game, 153,000 is fine for me. We still need to do a little bit of cleanup in that we've got to just fix some areas of the texture where we couldn't get a, a clean um, shot, a clean photograph for the photogrammetry. So we'll do that in Mari though. Just a couple of the areas through here, through the base that didn't have a photo to cover it like it did here. So yeah, clean up in ZBrush and then poly reduction and we also actually re uh, UV mapped it. So uh, Beck says, would it be something you would recommend trying to bake it to a low poly and make it uh, able to be used in a game? Yes, you certainly, certainly you could, you could do that as well. Um, the pro optimizer that comes with Max is very good. Uh, you can you can do a huge reduction on polys with that without losing any detail. Uh, like I said, I went from uh, I reduced ninety percent of the polygons. You could have probably reduced ninety five to ninety seven percent and still kept a good looking model. Um, but if you do start to lose detail, doing a bake is is a good way to go though. And you can still what what you can do is you can say this is our high poly version, one point five million polys. We duplicate it, we throw down a pro optimizer and we optimize the bejesus out of it. So we take it down to look, we, we reduce it like by 98%. That will give you a nice base mesh that you can then make some adjustments to for your low res model. And then you just bake out the high over the low for your normal map. So you can do it that way too. But because this is, I'm not planning on taking this into a game, uh, I'm doing a render in view. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not taking that route, but Yep, that's a good way to do it though. And you can still use the Pro Optimizer to get to get you a three quarters of the way to a, a good low res model. So, so no, I, I do recommend you do that. If, you, if you're doing game models, then um, that'll be the, the most efficient way to do it. Will be to, to work with a really low poly model and then do a bake out from the high to the low. Uh, Beck says, I don't know if you're able to already think, but could I have that statue model to play around with? <laughs> Since I don't know how to get photo scan models or know if I have the equipment. I'll think about it, Beck. Uh, this actually is going in my store. This, this red tundra that I'm creating. I'm going to be selling on my creative market and, and my website store. Uh, but I'll think about it. You are a sub, so I'll think about it. 
I can certainly give you the photos if you want to um, try your hand at doing it, doing some photogrammetry. No, that's cool. But like I said, I'm happy to give you the photo set if you want to try and play around with recreating it yourself. Um, in fact, what, what we might do today is, uh, before I finish the stream up in an hour and a, a bit, we might jump into reality capture because I do want to do this, um, I do want to capture this sculpture that I want to add to this scene. Uh, so we might do that. Paz, good to see you, Paz. How are you? Are you have you done all your Christmas shopping, Paz? We've just been talking about what we've been, what we have and haven't been doing for our Christmas shopping, and I haven't started mine yet. So, <laughs> so I got a lot of work to do between now and and the time I front up to my sister's and my brother's place. That's okay. I'll just spend a whole day in a one of those big big shopping malls, and hopefully, I can get everybody done at once. But it's good to see you, Paz. Um, too many people to buy for. I know. I, like I was saying, my my brother has three children. My sister has three children. So I've got to buy for six kids, as well as four adults: my brother and his wife, and my sister and her, her husband. Uh, so and it gets so expensive. Everything is so expensive now. I sound like one of those old coots that's constantly complaining about the price of things, don't I? But it is, everything gets so bloody expensive. When there are so many people to buy for. Uh, this should be fine. I just wanted to soften up the edge of that um, that top piece on top of the red tundra. I'm just gonna copy that modifier. We'll select this one and we can paste that modifier on. That's why I love Max's modifier stack. The fact that we can copy and paste makes life much easier. And let's select this one, paste the modifier, and this one, paste the modifier. Uh, I'm also, I think, going to throw an, throw an edit poly down and just uh, redo my smoothing group for that. Uh, the same with these, just throwing the chamfer on it made it look a little um, angular. Bex says Max is great software to be fair. It is. I love Max. Max is my baby. I love Max so much. Uh, edit poly. Auto smooth. Edit poly. Auto smooth. Yeah, I love, you love Max too, Paz. We both love Max. Everybody loves Max. <laughs> it is great software. I've used it for a very long time. It's the first 3D software I ever learned was 3D Studio Max back in the day. And I've been using it ever since. I love it. Love it. Couldn't imagine using anything else. I'm not saying that this is the only... You know, you guys know I don't say Max is it, and if you don't use Max, then you're doing it wrong. You use whatever you're comfortable with, whether it's Maya, whether it's Blender, which is completely free. That's a big tick in Blender's book, or, or Cinema 4D or anything. They're all very good. Um, I'm just used to Max. Because, like I said, it's what I started with. It's what they trained us on when I went to uni. So, Max for me, forever. Just let me have a think here. I don't really. I might. I might just go back to these pieces and check some things. See, the, the reason we're getting this look through the side here with our polygons is because I didn't really do that chamfer correctly. Um, so what I might actually do, I'm just going to turn these off. This is the other thing I love about Max's modifier stack. We can turn off our modifiers to go back to our original. Back down in the stack. Um, what I really should do here is select the edges and not let it select everything. 
Yeah, I did use a smoothing group on it, but it didn't seem to want to smooth out those edges properly. So if I turn them back on, I can still see that uh, the polygons that make up the sides here. And that's because of the way I applied the, uh, the chamfer modifier. I don't really want to do a turbo smooth or anything on top of this, which is not really going to help us anyway. What I really need to do here is I need to, I'm just going to remove them. I need to go into an edit poly. Uh, need to go in and select our edges. I need to deselect the ones I don't want the chamfer modifier on. In fact, it might be easier to see if I can do a ring or a loop. Yeah, that's that's a better way. We'll, we'll loop them. Okay, now we can throw down the chamfer modifier. Let's pull it back, it's way too much. Reduce the tension a little bit. Uh, so yeah, I did try the smoothing group approach um, back, but it didn't work. <laughs> And this is a proper way to do it. I was just being lazy. You really should select your edge loops before you do a chamfer. You shouldn't just throw a chamfer modifier on everything. Sometimes you can. We got away with it for the railings, the uh, iron work for the railings, but for these we can't. Uh, Paz says, I'm having fun with um, Moe 3D this month. It's really fun, Nerbs modeling. I can make a toaster now. Cool. Nerbs modeling is really, really, is really fun. Um, still used a lot doing Nerbs stuff. Okay, so we're going to have to go through and fix these for these as well, because I was being lazy, I did not do it properly. I should have done it properly. I'm just going to go into isolation mode, throw down an edit poly. And let's select our edges again. It, it's no big deal, you select one edge, you loop it. I mean, you know, I was being incredibly lazy. Okay, let's throw down our chamfer, pull it back, give us two iterations and pull back on the uh, curvature a bit, or the tension I should say a little bit. Okay, same with you. So you made, you made a toaster Pairs. I don't know about you guys, but when I model, I, I enjoy the modeling phase, um, putting ducks, creating a 3D model, I enjoy that. But I, I really get a kick out of texturing up stuff. I really like uh, adding textures to models as well. I don't know, it just feels more, um, more arty to me because I get in there with my Wacom pen in Mari and I paint my textures in and I enjoy doing all that sort of stuff. Some people don't and I, I hate UV mapping, but I like the texturing phase where I actually put textures on stuff. A bit more, you're joking? I'm okay, Pat. But Nerbs modeling is fun to do. You can make some really cool stuff with uh, Nerbs modeling. Let's loop it. Everybody has different ways of making the same sort of thing though, I've I, I found. Not, n rarely do you get uh, a 3D artist that will do things the exact same way as everyone else does. Everyone has their preferred workflow. Uh, Paz says, I mean a chamfer box, come on. <laughs> okay.
But I still like Nerves Modeling. Nerves Modeling is cool. Beck says, um, I've been showing, I've been slowly putting together that modular building kit in UE4 this week for the first first time I've done some modeling and texturing in a while and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, I really like, when, when we worked on that um, Unreal House on the Hollow project, I really enjoyed that. I liked working with Unreal. It was, it's a really nice game engine. Trust me, <laughs> I've used some dog game engines in my career, um, but UE4 was it really, really nice to use. It's a, it's a beautiful game engine. Uh, the artist tools are, are, are amazing. <laughs> Paz says, bully and white toast. <laughs> Obviously, yeah. Uh, let's throw down our champa. Let's pull it back. Let's up our iterations to two and pull back on the tension. Just want to soften up those hard edges. And now we're not getting that horrible polygon look that we were getting that we're getting down here. See, when you do it properly, it works. When you try and uh, rush through it like I do, it doesn't work. And edit poly, edge edge selection. Um, Beck says, are you going to render in Max as well? And if so, what renderer? No, I'm going to render in Eon View. Oh. So I'm going to be using... Um, it's hidden behind me. I'm going to be using that program there called Eon View to do the rendering. Because uh, it does really nice work. If you, if, you want, if you need to render environments, it does environments really nicely. And I want to put this in like a garden. So I'm going to use View. Um, they've actually recently gone to a subscription model with that program. It used to be incredibly expensive, like it was $1,500 US to buy the program, the, the top of the range version. They used to have different tiers, but now they've gone to a subscription model, which starts at, I think, $19.95 a month and goes up to $99 a month, just depending on what what tier you want to rent the software for, or you can still buy it. And they reduced the price to about $750, I think, to buy it outright for the professional version. Uh, Beck says, have you looked at Adobe's new renderer? No, Project Felix. I normally use Keyshot or something, but yeah, no, I haven't. I didn't even know Adobe had a renderer. Uh, I usually use V-Ray. If I'm doing rendering in Macs, it's V-Ray. Um, the studio, we use V-Ray in Macs, so I use that as well. Um, or Eon View if I'm doing environment stuff. But I, have, I wasn't even aware that um, Adobe had a renderer. I'll have to check it out. Uh, Beck says, that construction kit I showed you on the gallery was rendered in Adobe's one. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't realize. Let's just... Um, I'm just going to copy the link that, that you uh, put into Discord. I'm, I'm going to check it out here on the stream. You don't mind, do you, Beck? If I show everybody on the stream? <laughs> Let me know if you do. I'm pretty sure you probably won't. It's on Discord, so. Uh, so these are the modular pieces that Beck is talking about. It's okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are the modular pieces Beck has created to bring into UE4 to put his level together with. That's a really great way to work. Uh, you save on... Um, you save on poly memory, you save on texture memory by reusing modular pieces that can fit together in different shapes and forms. So you can get different looking sets by just reusing modular pieces of geometry. Android Lush says, I didn't know about Adobe. Had No, I didn't know either. Um, Android Lush, you're not the only one. I had no idea Adobe had a renderer. I mean, I, I, have, I use Adobe software and I still didn't know. <laughs> I have to have a look. Uh, Paz says, View Pioneer is free. It's free light version. I don't know if it is anymore. Because uh, Eon rebranded this month, so it's all brand new. And I'll go to Eon's site. I don't think, I don't think they even give you Pioneer anymore. I think it's all you can you can download demos, but they're only a thirty day demo. 
I think with their new um, with their new system, you don't get that option anymore. So this is the company here. This is the software that I use to do environment rendering. I'll just pop the link into um, into chat in case you guys want to check it out. And it does environments very nicely. Um, let me go to their blog. I think that's where they talk about it. No, no, no. They, they redesigned the website and it's uh, a bit confusing to, to navigate. <laughs> They're gone for, you know, the bling of everything without any of, but it can be very difficult. Oh, here we go. Blog. There we go. And it's this one here. So they just recently rebranded their software and now they're calling it just, they're just calling it View. It used to be called Eon View, now it's just called View. And they've gone back to version one because of this rebranding. They were up to version 2016. Uh, but they've gone to this subscription model where the basic uh, version, which is the creator's solution, which is probably fine for most people, is $19.95 a month. Or if you want to buy it, uh, it looks like uh, it's 199 the, the professional and the enterprise versions uh, give you more options. They, they do break it down for you, like here. The creator solution, you can only render up to 4K, which it used to be 1920 by 1080. So they've increased the, uh, the render size for the creator solution. And it, of course, professional and enterprise, there is no limit. Uh, there are other things though that don't come with the creator solution so you was you should check if you're looking at uh, subscribing to this model of theirs now but you can still buy the software outright and it is cheaper now than it used to be if you do want to buy it because it used to be twice that price for the professional version so there you go it's good software uh, they've gone to a subscription model like every other software company now uh, to me, that's probably a little expensive if I'm just for one program. Like, you know, Adobe charge more, but you get access to a lot more programs with Adobe subscription. That's, oh, well, that Max is, is expensive to subscribe to as well. Uh, if it was me and I was going to be doing a lot of rendering of environment stuff, I'd, I'd buy it. I wouldn't rent it. I, I don't like the thought of not owning my software. So if I was thinking about this program, I would buy that version instead of renting it, for, unless you've only got a short-term project. That would be my advice. Uh, it's called Adobe Dimension, Beck says. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, but having said that, Paz, um, if you've got the View Pioneer version, it won't stop working. So you can still use that version. Um, but I just, I don't think that they're, give, they're giving away a free version anymore. That they, give, they give away a 30-day 30, uh, 30 trial. Yeah. It's popped up here in the corner. They give you a 30-day trial, but I don't think they give you the free version to use. Uh, I could be wrong. I haven't really looked through a lot of this yet because they only really announced this on December 3rd, so it wasn't that long ago. I haven't had a chance to read through everything yet. Although I do have the new version of their software, so. Uh, so Adobe Dimension, I'll check that out though, Beck. Uh, Adobe's renderer. Paz says, I remember using it a few years ago, really impressive, but the rendering time was very long. <laughs> it must be said that it takes a good computer. Yeah, it, it, View, View in the past always had that criticism that it, you needed multi-core machines, you needed huge amounts of memory, and it took forever to render. They have improved it. To, 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 to Eon's credit, it has gotten much faster. Um, the new version is, in, depending on how old the, uh, the last version you used was, it's been increased dramatically. It's, you know, it's not as fast as V-Ray though. I have to give it, but then it, it has to deal with a lot more than V-Ray. It's an, a, a complete environment when you're rendering in view. So, but it, it's not as fast as V-Ray, but it is much faster than it used to be. And every time they release a new version, the renderer gets faster and faster. Sniper Echo, good to see you, Sniper. You're late, that's okay. We were saying it's uh, Christmas time. Everybody's busy with everything at the moment. <laughs> So it's okay, better late than never. It's good to see a sniper though. And we were looking at Beck's modular pieces here for, that he's taking into UE4. And they're very nice, nicely textured too, Beck. I like them. Liked them a lot, they look great. They'll look good in the engine too. So 
So yes, we're getting back to our model. That's right, we're doing our uh, chamfering, aren't we? Let's pull back on the chamfer. Let's increase the iterations to two and let's pull back on the tension a little bit. Okay, now we did it properly, they look right. <laughs> I was just saying to, to the guys, Sniper Echo, that I, I tried to try to rush through it and just threw a chamfer on it without selecting my edges, and it wasn't good. It wasn't correct. It wasn't not the good, not a good way to do it. I should not be teaching, showing you guys bad working habits. Uh, Sniper says got distracted trying to get Blender 2.8 to work as fast as 2.7. Some changes are difficult to fathom. So as it slowed down, Sniper Echo, the new version of Blender, over the, compared to the old one. Pez says nice, I don't know what it is, but it looks nice. <laughs> are you talking about my model or are you talking about something else? This is a rotunda if you're talking about my model. We're going to put it on a terrace and it's going to be put in a garden that I'm going to render up in Eon View. So we're going to create an environment in View. Um, there are still parts that I have to texture up. Obviously these pink, green and <laughs> the plain colors, they haven't been textured yet. We're going to do that in Mari and in Substance Painter as well as the base. Uh, the center section here is a pond. I'm going to put a pond in here just for something different because I haven't created a uh, rotunda with a pond in it. And um, our urn here is going to go in the middle. I'll put some interesting plant life in it. So there'll be water in the middle. And this will be sitting on a garden terrace. Okay. Uh, Sniper says, no, 2.8 is way faster. Some user interface workflow changes are weird is all. Okay. <laughs> well, that, that's good. I would hate to think that they'd release a new version and it would be slower. That, 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 that would not be good. So we've UV mapped that. Let's UV map these pieces now. Let's send it over to Ryzen, um, Ryzen UV and remember to collapse the stack because uh, it wants an edit poly. Ryzen UV wants an edit poly before you send it to it. I believe that's only a restriction with the free plugin. He, the guy that makes makes this plugin to send the model between Max and um, and Ryzen UV, sells another version on Gumtree, and I believe with the one he sells, you don't have to collapse the stack. But because I haven't purchased it, he gives he gives a free one away, where you have to collapse the stack. But he sells a version where you don't have to collapse the stack if you want to send it back and forth. But I have no problem collapsing the stack. It's no big deal for me. So. I don't mind. I'm happy with the free version. Uh, Sniper says, like the selector tool works separately to everything else, it means uh, I constantly need to hit the user interface to move or drag faces. That seems a bit weird, the selector tool being separate to everything else. Gonna check that to make sure our UVs are correct, and that looks fine. Collapse everything. Let us unwrap it. And check it. That's fine. I'll send it over. I don't know if you guys do any video editing, if you use Adobe Premiere or After Effects or anything like that, but um, I was amazed at how much more quickly uh, I can do a, a render in Media Encoder. I was surprised having, how having more cores, how that benefits video rendering. Now I know having more cores for anything is going to make everything faster. But it, it surprised me how much faster by just uh, having a few more cores can make that video rendering. Quite amazing. That in the fact too that Adobe now allow you to use your video card to speed up your workflow, which really helps. Paz says, I don't have this bridge between Max and Unfold. It's a script. It is a script. Uh, you can download it for free from Rhizom's website. So. Paz, I will show you exactly where. 
they make he makes you, you can get a plug in for Max, for Blender, I think, and for Cinema 4D. Or is it Max and Meyer in Cinema 4D? We'll have a look. It's a completely free plug in though. And it's a real, I find it really useful and really helpful. I don't have to, um, uh, I don't have to, uh, keep exporting and importing and all that sort of stuff. Actually, I think they have a link to it here. Bridges. Here we go. If you go to Bridges and other software, you can download it for free from here. The extended one is the one you pay for, but I use the free one and it, it's, it's fine. Uh, they have it for Cinema 4D and they also have it for Blender. So again, I'll just pop that link in Twitch chat. I do recommend the software. It's very good. If you do a lot of um, UV mapping and you hate UV mapping, Rhizom's Unfold program is great. So yes, download it. Download the plugin from the from their website. There, it's completely free. If you use uh, Max Cinema 4D or Blender, and you use Rhizom's program. Obviously, if you don't use the Rise and Unfold program, it's not much use to you. I just love that I can UV map in three button clicks. As you guys know, I hate UV mapping. I hate it so much. Some people like it. I'm not one of them. So I want to send this top piece over. I might as well UV that UV map that bit as well while we're here. Let's see what it does with this. This is more of a complex piece of geometry. Uh, let's let's go with let's try you. Let's check it. Uh, it hasn't done a bad job. It looks like. Um, I think a couple of my pieces of geometry are, are inverted or flipped. I think the normals might be flipped on a couple of them. Maybe. No, Ryzen isn't free, I'm afraid, Beck. You do have to pay for it. You can download a 30-day fully functional trial version from their website to check it out to see if it's going to be useful for you. Um, but no, you do have to pay for it. You can, you can subscribe monthly as well. You don't have to buy it outright. Like every other company now, you can subscribe for as long as you need it for each month. Or you can still buy it outright if you want. No, only, only the bridge is free back, yeah. Only the bridge between the programs is free. You hate UV mapping too. <laughs> but download the 30 day trial, yeah. Give, give the 30 day trial a go. See if it's, if it's going to be useful to you. I don't think it's, it's not overly expensive. I mean, it's not saying, it's, I'm not saying it's cheap. It's about a hundred euros I think maybe I, again I can't remember exactly um, but it's not incredibly expensive and if it's going to save you time it may be worthwhile buying it um, I, because I have to do so much UV mapping for work anyway uh, it saves me a huge amount of time so it, it's worth it for me to buy it but you don't need to buy it oh. That's strange. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Oh, you don't need to buy it though. Beck says, compared to UV mapping yourself, how comparable is it? Uh, it's, it's it's the same. You can do everything, you, anything that, that that program does, you can do by hand. It's just going to take a little bit longer. And depending on how quick you are at UV mapping, you know, you don't need it though. You, I can, you can do all of this UV mapping in Max or in, in, in your 3D program, by all means. It's just going to take a little longer. The reason that that program is so good is because it it has algorithms where you can just hit a button, it works out the unwrap for you, you hit another button, it cuts the model up for you and you hit another button and it packs your UVs into your UV space for you automatically. That's, that's, it's just, it's just fast. <laughs> and if you don't like doing UV mapping by hand, then, you know, but you could UV map this in Max. I like I'd select this part of the geometry and then I'd throw on a spherical UV map. I'd select these parts and I'd throw on a cylindrical UV map. I could do it all in Max. It just takes a bit longer. Vic says, uh, do you know if it works with vertex painting? I don't know. I'd be surprised if it didn't because it, 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 there's a lot of stuff in that program that even I don't touch, don't need, I haven't used. 
it's pretty full full featured. You should download the trial and, and see if it's see if it will be a benefit for you. It's a 30 day free trial, so check it out. You don't have to pay for it. It's fully functional for 30 days. Um, yeah, check it out. See. I do love it though because it saves me so much time. Uh, so yeah, this this piece of geometry is already mapped up. I'm just going to go into isolation mode. I just want to make sure that um, I don't have any inverted polys. No, it's not inverted anywhere that I can see. It's really weird. I'm going to throw an unwrap down on this. I just want to check it. No, that looks fine. Um, I'm going to just throw a checker uh, texture on it too. I just want to check. Putting this on here so I can check that uh, the UVs don't look weird. No, it's fine. It just looked a little weird in the um, viewport in in Rise on UV, but it looks fine here in Max. So that should be okay. Okay, so they're all UV. I don't think I've got anything else. Oh, actually, these. I don't think I UV these yet either. Let's have a look. Wants to be an edit poly. So yeah, anything I'm doing in this program, you can do by hand. It just, just takes a little bit longer, that's all. Let's try this one. And you can try a, different, a few different algorithms too to see which one gives you the best, the best sort of cut. I'm not really happy the way it's cutting it like that, so I'm just going to undo that. Let's try these other ones. Let's, uh, let's cut it, pack it, and check it. Now, uh, that's, the, it, you know, uh, that's still not great. I don't like what it's done there either. And you can get in here and do it by hand as well. You don't have to rely on this. You can do, you can do your cuts by hand too. Um, Sniper says, "Come to think about it, I don't think I've ever seen you unwrap something by hand." <laughs> no, I don't think you have either. Um, that's how much I hate it. Beck says, "I assume it supports seamless UVs. Seamless UVs. What do you mean by seamless UVs?" trying to work out what exactly you mean back um, so if, for instance I'm gonna I'm gonna check to see what it does with a couple of these others so far it's not doing what I like uh, as we can see here so it, it has problems sometimes with some geometry and if, it, if I can't get it to do a cut that I this this cut might be better actually uh, okay this cut is better for the top and the bottom, but the column itself is not great. So I'm just going to undo that. And I think what I'm going to do here is do it by hand. So I'm going to select an edge. I'm going to cut it. Uh, 
Um, so I just want one cut line on the main part of the column. I think I'm going to select an edge here and we're going to... No, I'm just holding down the uh, shift key while I do this to select the uh, edge automatically. And we'll cut that. And let's do the same down the bottom. So if the, if the built-in automated tools don't give you the look you want, you can always get in there and do it all by hand. Let's do the ones along the base. Uh, Beck says, so you could take that middle of cylinder and it would um, you could take that middle cylinder and it would map it out and just flatten it to where the UVs flatten it on the UV square to be all one flat triangle. Yes, this program could do that for you, yes. Or you could just do it in your 3D program as well. This is not complex geometry. To, you can do this quite easily in the 3D program, but I just wanted to show you that you can do it. You can do manual stuff as well in this program. You don't have to do the automated stuff. It's a fully featured UV program. And I actually find it easier to work with um, with this program than I do to work in Max's native tools. Beck says, well, pretty much what it seems you're doing right now anyway, yeah. Uh, nice, just, uh, Pat says, nice, just dread, just drag in the viewport and it works perfectly. Yeah, you just hold down the shift key and it can automatically find uh, find the edge that you want to cut on, which, is, which I really like. I don't think you can do that in Max. I've not seen that option in Max anyway, in their UV tools. I could be wrong. I, like I said, I, I don't like doing a lot of UVing by hand. I prefer to um, I prefer to to get to use this program and get it to do it automatic, automatically for me anyway. I'm just trying to show you how easy it is though, to cut up a model. Uh, Sniper says, I know a lot of people unwrap as they make objects. Yeah, that's another good way to do it as well. Uh, excuse me for two seconds. There we go. Uh, Beck says, Max does have a smart select and it's okay. Pretty much the same as what you're doing right now, but this looks far more user friendly. Yes, this is why I like this program. It, Max's built-in tools are good. You know, most 3D programs now, because they've been around for so long, have pretty good built-in UV mapping tools. Um, and Max is no exception. I just like this program because all it does is UV mapping. It's really easy to navigate and to use. And I love these automated tools to do automatic, automatic unwrapping. Um, nine times out of 10, I can use these without a problem. Sometimes it, it gets confused. The program will get confused, but most times it's fine. So yeah, it, that, that's why I like this software. It's easy to use, it's quick to use. And it has those automatic tools where I can just hit a button and get it to unwrap for me. Um, Beck says, can't wait for the days UV mapping is fully auto and always perfect. Yeah, me too. I've been waiting a while. <laughs> they aren't yet there yet. But I agree, I can't wait for that day either. That's what PTEX was supposed to be sort of like, um, 
a solution to that PTEX mapping. It's supposed to be so you didn't have to get in there and do this uh, manual UV mapping using PTEX textures. But PTEX has not taken off as much as I thought it would. Smurfberry barbecue, good to see you, Smurfberry. We were just saying everybody's probably out Christmas shopping, and that's why you weren't here at the beginning of the stream, isn't that right, Smurfberry? <laughs> Um, yeah, Paz says PTEX, no need to UV. I'm pretty sure, I, again, I haven't done a lot of work with PTEX models. It was very big a few years ago when PTEX was first introduced to the scene. And it is, you know, 3D coat, um, ZBrush, you can work with PTEX textures as well. Yeah, totally, that's Maverick says. <laughs> Let's, um, Let's get it to do an unwrap, let's cut it, wrap it, let's pack it. And see, it's given me a better result now, I did it by hand. As, as we're, Sometimes these automated tools, even if it's a simple piece of geometry, can lose it. it. Ironically enough, the more complex the model you need to UV map, the better these automated tools are. The simpler the geometry, sometimes these automated tools can lose it a bit. Uh, Paz says it's it's Pixar who created the tool. Yeah, they did. Pixar, I think, created PTEX. Beck says ZBrush UVs. Oh god, yeah, no, I don't don't I don't do any UV mapping in ZBrush. <laughs> I hate ZBrush at the best of times. All I use ZBrush for is cleanup work, which is what I'm going to have to do with this um, model we're working on now. So that that's fine. I liked what it's done. So I'm just going to send that back to Max. Uh, and we did, now we've done one and each of these columns is identical to the others. All I need to do is do an unwrap and just open up my editor to make sure it's correct. And now I can just uh, copy that unwrap onto all the other columns. So let's just do a paste. Again, I'm just going to open that up to make sure it is pasting across correctly. Yep. Good. Always like to double check because you never know. So I'm just going to paste that unwrap on all of our columns now. You've never heard of PTEX, really? Sniper? Yeah, PTEX. It was a, a, a way uh, that they came up with for texturing 3D models that was. Uh, it was supposed to make it easier for you. You didn't have to rely on um, UV mapping. I, it hasn't really taken off as much as I thought it would, though. People still rely on UV mapping. It's still really important to UV map stuff. Maybe now that we're getting into real-time ray tracing in games and things, maybe it might come back for that. I mean, it's still around. Like I said, you can work with PTEX in ZBrush. You can work with PTEX in um, 3D Coat. But a lot of people still have to um, still have to UV map. Okay, so now we've done that. We've got all of our UVs done on our columns. So the base is UV mapped. The columns are UV mapped. The top pieces are done. The very top is done. The pieces on top of the urn are done. Let's do a save all so we don't lose the work we've done. I just like to get my viewport nice and organized before I do a save. And now, I, what, what would you guys prefer to look at? Do you want to watch me work back in ZBrush doing some cleanup work on this part of the um, photogrammetry object? Or do you want me to jump into reality capture and uh, try and cap oh, I want to capture a new um, sculpture from some photos. Which would you prefer to, to see for my last stream before I go on break? Do you have a preference for either one? Do you want to watch me work in ZBrush doing cleanup or do you want to watch me working in Reality Capture creating a new model? A new sculpt? You, Beck says a new sculpt. Do you, do you mean you want me in ZBrush doing... All I'm going to do is clean up work for this part of the mesh here. 
or I can jump into Reality Capture, bring in a photo set and get it to create a new 3D model for me. A new model, Sniper says. Reality Capture. Beck says no photos. <laughs> I mean, a new model. Okay, all right. It's, the consensus seems to be you want me to, to work on a new model, so let's do that. I'll keep Max open in the background here and I'll open up Reality Capture. You missed ZBrush yesterday, Smurfberry? Yeah, you, uh, actually, I don't think I worked in ZBrush yesterday. No, I don't think. I think yesterday we were working on, working on the railing for in here for the pond. I'm pretty sure. Um, but we'll, we'll jump into Reality Capture. <laughs> yeah, no, last week I was working in ZBrush. Don't worry, I've got to go back into ZBrush because I need to clean up, do a bit of clean up work here on this photogrammetry model, the top of the columns. So when I get back, I'll be working in ZBrush again. Don't worry, don't fret, you will see me working with that terrible program. Only terrible because this interface is terrible. I'm just going to open up Reality Capture. And the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to add some photographs so i'm going to go into my photo set and there's a um there is a statue here that i want to turn into a 3d model so we can add it to our to our rotunda so i'm going to open up our photo set and you can see i'm not sure how many photos exactly i've got 84 photos for this photo set 84. um Paz says, made a movie or a game in 10 minutes. And Smurf Beery says, I don't believe it happened. And Sniper says, I swear I don't hate Zero. <gasps> That's right. I don't hate the program. I just hate the interface. The interface is awful. Okay. So reality capture. We're brought in our photo set. Now I'm going to move on to the alignment stage. And I'm going to get it to align our photos. This is the fastest uh, photogrammetry software I've used. It's much faster than anything else I've used. Um, to do an 84 photo set like this in in context capture would take a couple of hours probably, but in reality capture we should be able to get it done before I finish for the day, so hopefully within the next half an hour. Yes, I did take the pictures back. I certainly did. I went out to the Botanical Gardens and I um, photographed a couple of monuments and some... That, that's where that lion urn is. I, I, I took photos of that in front of this building. And you can see how fast that was to do an alignment of the images. Of 84 images. This is the fastest software I have ever used, bar none. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to... I, I don't need all of this. I only want... If we actually have a look at the photos that it's working with... Uh, I only want the sculpture itself. I don't want the rest of the building. So, if I go into the gardens and I go to the statue, uh, let me open up one that's a good overview. This one here. Uh, this is the statue that's it, that's it's huge. I mean, the statue is massive. It's huge, huge, huge. I'm going to shrink it right down for our needs. Uh, but I'm only interested in the statue. I don't want any of the building. Uh, so yeah, I, I went out and just. Doop. Took these photos going around the um, the sculpture, and that's what we're going to be using. But I need to remove some most of the uh, environment here because I'm only interested in the actual sculpture itself. Sniper says, "In fact, I love ZBrush so much. Before I watched the stream, <laughs> so you, you're saying you used to love ZBrush, but now you don't because you watch." my stream and I hate it so much. I don't hate ZBrush. I don't, don't, don't give people the wrong idea. I don't hate ZBrush. I just hate the interface. Uh, all I'm doing here is I'm pulling in our, um, the area that the program will be concentrating on to do our model. Because I'm not interested in the building. I only really want the um, model itself, the, the statue in front of it. Uh, Beck says, no way it made a model from those images. It, it will. Not yet it hasn't. It's just on a point cloud at the moment. Uh, that's nuts. Like, crazy nuts. Uh, Android Lost says, ZBrush is live. ZBrush is love. Don't kick me, Sniper Echo. <laughs> yeah, Beck, it hasn't made the model yet. But what it's done at this stage is it's, um, 
it's created a point cloud, which is where it starts before it makes the model. And all I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm just um, adjusting the box to tell it where I want it to concentrate. Because I'm not interested in the building in the background. So I'm just going to rotate the box so it matches our, um, our model here, our geometry. I'm going to pull it in to get rid of everything I don't want. Pull it down because we don't want that high either. Maybe to just above her, her head in the statue, just out the front of the um, the lions there, and just to either side of the actual sculpture itself. Um, because this statue is right up against the wall, if we have a look at the photos. Uh, let me take, get one that's up, taken from a bit of a distance. Um, I'm going to have to capture some of the wall because I want to capture that motif, that decoration here at the back. It's very cool. I love photogrammetry. Love it. And it, like I said, it's used a lot in games now because it saves, um, it saves time. You get photorealistic models as well. Uh, and it's incredibly cool and fun. So... So there, basically what I've done is I've moved the box just to encompass the, um, the part of that sculpture I want. I don't want the rest of the building. So now that I've done that, I can move on to the next stage, which is reconstruction. And I'm going to do it in normal detail. You can do it in preview quality, high detail, or normal detail. I'll do it in normal detail. Normally I'd go high, but high might take a bit longer than I have uh, for the stream. So I'll do it in normal detail. So we'll set it up and let it do its thing. And this will take a bit longer than creating the point cloud, but it's still going to be much faster than any other 3D photogrammetry software I have ever used. It does use your GPU, so if you've got a good GPU, it'll make it'll take full use of that and speed it up. Um, Beck says this is madness and awesome. I'm going to be out of a job now. I know, and trust me, I know it's it's a bit of a worry. Uh, photogrammetry eventually, I guess they won't need us 3D artists, they can just take photos and the software will do it on its own. They still need us 3D artists to make stuff that doesn't exist, you know. Like the rotunda is a good example, the one that we're working on in Max. That's based on a photographic rotunda, uh, an object, a, a real world thing. But I'm, I'm altering it, making it different. So I'm adding my own decorations and pieces to it to make it a unique item. So they're still going to need 3D guys to own girls, don't want to be sexist, 3D people to actually create stuff. The photogrammetry won't replace us. We'll just, we can just use it to enhance our work and to speed it up. Uh, so you can see it, the, the program does tell you how long it, it, it thinks it's going to take and it's generally pretty accurate. Um, it's, it says it's going to finish at 1.38 my time. So because at the moment here it's 1.34 p.m. Uh, so you can see it's, say, it's saying it's going to take about four minutes to do the reconstruction, which is amazing. For a model this detailed, for, a, for an object this detailed, most photogrammetry software would take hours to do this reconstruction. Uh, Beck says spaceships aren't real, sorted. That's right, I'll make spaceships for my whole life. Uh, they can't photoscan those. 3D Vidicon, 3D. <laughs> I like that username, by the way, 3D, welcome. Uh, says, uh, hi, if you use licensed uh, RC software, you can integrate it in Houdini. If you use licensed reality capture software, you can integrate it in Houdini. Okay. I don't use Houdini, I use 3D Studio Max. Sniper says, way to pivot. <laughs> I say yes, it's incredibly fast, it's very good, it's my preferred 3D photogrammetry program, Reality Capture now. Uh, unless I'm doing stuff with the studio and then I use Context Capture because studio work is different to my own personal work, they, they, they need different sorts of stuff and Reality Capture, uh, sorry, Context Capture does the studio work better. But for my own personal projects I love Reality Capture because it's so fast. Um, or you can use um, Aggie Soft's Photoscan or Meta, Meta, 
It's not called Metascan. Something. Uh, Photoscan. Agisoft Photoscan is good as well. Uh, remember last week when we were talking about photogrammetry and we were talking about the three different programs, I showed you that that line urn uh, that I, I, I recreated in each of the three programs and I showed you the differences between how each of the three make a model and what the model looks like. But they're all very good. They'll all get, they'll all get you to a 3D model in the end. So, uh, Sniper Echo says, Phil, while you were waiting, any thoughts on my question in Discord? Oh, I didn't even know you put one in, in Discord. <laughs> Sorry, Sniper Echo. Okay. Uh, Sniper says, has anyone done this sort of thing in Blender? Let me have a look. I'm going to copy the link. And while this is working in the background, it's, ne it's nearly done. We'll come back to it in a sec. Let's have a look at this. Um... <laughs> I hit the wrong button. Let me copy the link. So Sniper Echo is asking if anyone has done this sort of thing in Blender. Normal direction make two meshes look combined without tons of cuts or added polys. Ah, I see what you said. So basically, to make it look like the column is attached to the base without adding more polygons. Two separate meshes, select the edge verts, set a value to match another surface normal direction, Okay, set value to match other surface normal direction. Okay. Um, no, I haven't used this method, Sniper Echo. Uh, I have not used it, actually. I, no. So they're two separate meshes, but they're, they're using the normals to actually make it look like it's one mesh. And that way they don't have to, because if you attach this to the base and you're going to add more polys. That's interesting. I haven't used it myself. Set vertex normal. Okay. So it's basically just like, a, it's just, it's just a, a, the, using the normals to bake it. Mercury says, hmm, Paz looks, looks Boolean there. Yeah, I don't think it is. And Android Lust says, I'm going to try that out now. Actually, yeah, I, I'm, I, I'm curious too. Because basically what they're doing is they're faking it with a normal, the direction of the normal. So it's, yeah, it's interesting. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. I, I haven't done it either myself, but it's just setting the vertex normal. So it's basically, uh, you, you're only going to see this when you render it, by the way. It's still going to look broken in, in the viewport, I, I would assume, unless the viewport is maybe using a direct 3D, maybe then you would. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's just faking the vertex normal to make it look like it's attached. Interesting. Um, Sniper says, I got mixed results in Blender. And Beck says, downloading Reality Capture as we speak. Yes, no, dude, check it out. Reality, Reality Capture is amazing. And here we have the model that uh, Reality Capture has, has done. And again, you saw it. It took it all of, all of, I don't know, what was it? Maybe, maybe 10 minutes, if that. Uh, it looks like I might have pulled it down a bit too far. I think I need to, um, to go back and do that again. So I'm missing the top of my background sculpture here so what I'm gonna do yeah it's incredibly incredibly fast and this is just in you know this is normal detail we could go up to high detail as well So because it is so fast, I'm just going to get it to realign the images again. Because um, I, I messed up with my box here, I, I pulled it down too far, so I need to fix that up. And again, because the program though is so fast, it's really no big deal to uh, just to start it again. 
It's not like we wasted hours while it was um while it was working. It was really really quick, and that's why I like to use this program now because it is so fast. Um, I'll pull it down, but I'll grab more of the top than I actually want. Then I'll just have to um to clean it up a bit when we bring it into the 3D program into Max. But that should be good. I think I've got all of my all of my sculpture now. So again, I'm going to move on to the reconstruction phase and get it to do that. And again, it's not going to take it very long. Uh, but getting back to what Sniper was talking about there, that's really interesting. I have to check this out myself. I'll leave it on this so we can we can watch how quickly it moves. So it will take it about five minutes, but trust me, any other 3D software, photogrammetry software would take a couple of hours. Uh, Beck says, what version of the software are you using? I'm pretty sure I'm using the latest version. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. I can't see it written anywhere on the, in, on the bar, but it should be the latest version. I updated it not that long ago. I generally keep my software pretty much updated to whatever's the latest version. Uh, I installed the new version of Vue a couple of days ago, I think, or last week. So I've got the latest version of that software as well when we jump into using Eon Vue to do our environment renders. Uh, so whatever version you download from Reality Capture's website, Beck, that'll be the version I'm using. I'm pretty sure they give you the same version as the retail that they do for the trials and stuff. Uh, but remember too, if you don't want to spend any money on photogrammetry, there is a sop software called Alice Vision, which uh, Sniper Echo mentioned and um, uh, told me about. Uh, that's completely free and open source. So, uh, and from what I, even though I haven't used it, looking at the results from the demo, it looks very good. So, Sniper says, "Are you heading up north for the holidays, Bill?" I certainly am. Today is again my last stream for 2018. I am going up to Queensland, so right up the top of Australia, to visit my sister, and then I'm coming halfway back down Australia to visit my brother before I return home to the bottom of Australia. Uh, I'm going to be doing that over Christmas and the New Year. So first off is my sister, and then down to my brother, and then back home. So yep, I'm going to be doing that. I was saying uh, I only get to see my sister and my brother once a year, generally at Christmas time. So. I'm looking forward to that. And they, I like their kids. Their kids are a good value. They're nice kids. Um, I was saying how expensive it is because I haven't done any Christmas shopping yet. So I'm going to have to do Christmas shopping in the next few days because I've got to fly out soon. Uh, and the kids won't be happy if, if Uncle Phil shows up with no presents. So I am going north. Yes, I'm going north. Uh, Sniper says... Bring us back something nice. And Tap Crush, Tap Crush, good to see you. Uh, says, good to hear. Hey, Phil. It's good to see you, Tap Crush. I hope that you've, you, have you finished your Christmas shopping, Tap Crush? Or are you like me and haven't started it yet? Yes. Christmas shopping. Christmas shopping. So expensive. So expensive. You've finished it? Oh, no. <laughs> now I feel even worse, Tap Crush. I haven't even started it. Wow. That's okay. Like I said, I'll, I'll go to one of those big shopping centers, malls as you guys in the United States call them. I'll do it all in one day. I'll just run around madly for the day and pick everything up that I need. <laughs> I always do this though. Every year, every year, I say to myself, you don't want to run around like a headless chicken getting everything in one day like you have every other year you know get yourself more organized Philip and pick up stuff gradually toward the end of the year so you're ready to go I never do I never do I always run around like a mad thing 
Uh, Tap Crush says, I just finished mine in the past two days, though. That helps. <laughs> that makes me feel a bit better, Tap Crush, yes. That does help. Um, so, yeah, no, but I'm looking forward to seeing my sister and her kids and my brother and his kids. Everybody's got kids but me. <laughs> and I'm the oldest in the family. I don't want kids, by the way. I mean, I, I like theirs, but I, I don't want any children of my own. Quite, I'm too selfish to have kids. It's all about me, me, me. <laughs> but I do like their kids. They're, they're, they're nice kids. They're fun. I think last year we went to see the um, the new Star Wars movie. I don't think there's a new one out this year, though. So I'm going to have to think of some other way to entertain them. Don't know what yet. What can we do in Queensland? I guess we could go to the Gold Coast because there's like um, movie world and stuff in the Gold Coast. They'd probably like that. I personally find it incredibly boring, but I'm sure they'd enjoy it. You know, I like rides. Don't get me wrong. I like uh, theme park rides, but I don't know. It's pretty lame movie world on the Gold Coast, but I'm sure they'd like it. It's almost done. It's telling me 1.48 by the time it's finished, so in another one minute. Uh, but again, we're working with 84 photos and it's still doing it in in five to ten minutes as opposed to most other software, it, software which would take at least a couple of hours. Okay, so we can see our 3D model here. It's done a, a, a good job. This is only on normal detail. You can push it up to high detail to get even more detail. Uh, an even better looking uh, final model. Now uh, that's all well and well and good, but let's um let's get it to texture it up as well. So, and that's easy. I, all I have to do is hit the texture button here, and it's going to go up, and it'll do texturing very quickly. So, generally, texturing stage only takes it a minute or two. So yeah, we were talking about more photos always being better than fewer photos for photogrammetry, but don't go overboard. You can see I've got 84 photos and that's given us enough to, to do this reconstruction of this um, statue. You don't need 500, but you need more than 20. Uh, and I always say take more than you need, but don't, don't go nuts. Don't take many, many, many more than you need. Because all, all you're going to do is slow down the uh, software and you're not going to get a better result in the end anyway. But don't have too few. Too few can be a bigger problem. So 149 now, it's saying it's going to be finished in... Okay, it's basically going up because it's, it's going through every photo in our photo set to actually do the reconstruction for the texture. So... Normally it's much faster, but the photo set is quite... Uh, 84 photos, so it's a bit bigger. Um, while it's doing that in the background, I might jump back into Max. Oh, it's speeding up now. No, we'll leave it here. It's getting through it pretty, pretty quickly. So yeah, this is the reason I love Reality Capture. It's so fast, so fast. And it gives you a good result too, provided you've got good photos. Uh, these photographs aren't taken with a huge megapixel camera. It's a 16 megapixel Fuji DSLR that I took them with. Uh, generally anything over eight megapixels or higher is okay for photogrammetry. Uh, even the, the camera built into your phone, provided it's at least eight megapixels, should be fine. Of course, the higher the megapixel, the, the, the better the quality of the photo, and so the better the photogrammetry, but... But you don't need a huge multi-megapixel camera to get good results. And you can take video footage into, this soft, into these programs as well. But I find with video footage, it's never, it never gives you as good a result as actually taking the photos with a, a good DSLR. 
um, you end up getting more noise in the fo in the video than you get in a photo, so the, the, the result is not as good. But that the option is built into a lot of the software. It can work with video footage as well. But I would still recommend taking photos over video footage if you want a better result. So what I'm planning on doing with this model, this, this statue, is I'm going to put them either side of the steps uh, around the outside of the rotunda on the terrace part. Smurfbury says, I just want to get a nice camera with uh, continuous burst. Sniper Echo says, any of you guys use a VR headset? A buddy of mine working on a game release, re released recently. It's called... What's it called? Scraper. Um, I haven't used a VR headset for for doing work. I, I played games in in, in VR, I've, so I've tried VR. And now you can see it with it with our model textured up. Let me get in here a bit. Now again, there are areas on the model here where I couldn't photograph because this model is is huge. This statue is huge. When I was standing next to it, I, my head comes up to about here. So uh, you could see where I was as I was taking the photograph. Um, those little dots, that's me walking around. So I, I started by taking close-up shots and then I got further away and took more shots. But because my head is only about that high, I couldn't take any shots looking down. Uh, so some areas like in here, we're going to have to uh, retexture in Mari, but that's no big deal. Uh, but the, the shots where I could actually, where the camera could actually see the model, you can see that uh, it textures it up quite well. And that took all of like maybe 15 minutes to, to make in reality capture. So it's really, really, really quick. So yeah, that's, that's, that's why I like this software so much, it, um, it's fast and it gives you a good result. So we're, we're, we'll use this statue, like I said, uh, for our model here. I'm going to put stairs on either side, so I want to put those statues either side of the stairs. And we're going to have to clean it up and like I said, do some texture work uh, in Mari just to, to fill in some of those areas where we couldn't photograph. Yeah, it, it is. Uh, Reality Capture, like I said, the fastest, um, it's the fastest software I've ever used for photogrammetry. And it gives you a good result. And that was just on normal detail. You can push it up to high detail. So if you want an even better looking result, then go to high detail, but it will take a bit longer. So yeah, that's that's what we do, how we create that. So let, let's export this model now though, so we can actually use it. Um, now there are tools built into into reality capture where you can clean your model and you can do all that sort of stuff. Um, in fact, I, I might run a clean on it as well. You can do basic cleanup work inside of the photogrammetry software, but I prefer to take it into a 3D program and do it there. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So I just did a, a quick clean on the model. All that's done is it's just just taking out any excessive polygons that it didn't need. You can see it hasn't changed the detail at all. Um, but I'm going to export our model now. Uh, export the mesh. Uh, statue, I'm just going to create a new folder called statue model. Uh, I'm going to export it as an OBJ, but you can export it in a huge amount of different formats. Uh, you, actually, let me get rid of my camera for a minute. 
There are a lot of different formats you can export your model as, so don't think that because I use OBJ you have to, you can use any of these. Uh, FBX, uh, DAE, uh, huge amount, but I'm going to stick to OBJ because I like to use OBJ and everything. I'm going to call it um, Statue. Now this is where it, it might be hard to see on the stream because I'm working in a 4K monitor and there's no way to make this bigger. Something that I'd like them to work on, the guys that are working that make reality capture is um, make it 4K, make 4K better for it because 4K, we're working on a 4K screen, it can be hard to read some of these things. Uh, uh, what's Paz saying here? Do you, do you have to use for a kitchen for example? You're so cheeky Paz. Whoa. You get a bill slap. You are so cheeky. Cheeky Paz. Kitchen indeed. I told you when we come back to do it, it, your next year when I come back we might revisit that um, that house in the hollow and I'll put a kitchen and a bathroom in and an outhouse out, of, out in the forest just for you guys. Yeah, tiny text, make 4K do more good. <laughs> that's right. Right, Smurfberry. Or a toilet, that's right. I know, I know. Yes, yes. Yes, there'll be a toilet. Yes, there'll be a kitchen. And there'll be an outhouse out in the forest as well. Just to keep all you guys happy. Uh, I'm just looking at the export settings here. We're saving it as an OBJ. So it's exporting the model and it's also exporting the uh, texture map. <laughs> Sniper says, I'm probably must send you a link about the house in the hollow. I have an idea for you. Okay, well you do that Sniper Echo. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. Should I be scared? No. Okay, let, let's see if we can import the model into this scene just before I finish up. Well, let me find it. Statue. Statue. Now, the, the one thing I don't like about reality capture is it, the way it UV maps is not very good. Uh, that's why we had to re UV map this uh, lion urn. So I'm expecting this one not to be UV mapped really nicely either. But we'll have a look. It's no big deal to re-UV map it and then just re-render the texture. Um, I found Context Capture does the best UV mapping. Reality Capture does the worst UV mapping. But it's, you know, we it, you can fix it either way. So, Okay, let's uh, rotate our model around so it's facing in the right direction. And let's pull it out from inside the rotunda so we can see it. And let's have a look at the texture map. Actually, I'm surprised it didn't bring the texture in. I wonder why. It didn't save the texture out, that's why it didn't bring it in. Okay. Why did you not export my texture? Okay, vertex normals, no. Uh, you can also set it to save the mesh in parts so if you don't want it to export one whole mesh you can tell it to export export the mesh in parts
something strange going on here. Actually, I think what's happened is, because you know how I did a clean on the model? Because I cleaned the model, even though it's showing us a texture, I have to re, um, reapply the texture, get it to, to do the texture map again. Because what we're seeing now is that's not the texture map, that's the vertex color map that it that it created. So because I cleaned the model, I have to um have to reapply it. Oh, okay, Snarker. Snarker has just sent me some stuff. I'll check that out, Snarker. I go after the stream. Looks cool. Yeah, no, I think it, it does look cool. Um, because yeah, if I turn that that house in the hollow into a game, I was thinking like um, a horror in, horror sort of mystery type game. Yeah, so that that could be very cool. I'll check that out. Thanks, thanks, Snipe Reckon. Um, yeah, so I'm just redoing the texture map. Just the software is redoing it. Have a look at it. Yeah, I will. I'll check it out. Sounds pretty, sounds cool. The game actually sounds cool. I like the title as well. Wendigo. Uh, you know that program you were talking about, Sniper Echo, as well, the um, the one that you asked the question about in on the Discord server? What was it called? What was it called? That software. <laughs> you know the one. Um, uh, what was that software called, Sniper Echo? Tell me, Sniper, what was that software called? Where, where, where? <laughs> Discord's going off and I'm trying to find a message. Okay, the uh, Open VDB, the new version of Vue, Eon Vue, can work with those Open VDB models now for like clouds. You can, you can create a cloud model using Open VDB that you can then import into, um, into Eon Vue. Or you can do it the other way as well. I think you can export from Eon View as an open VDB file uh, model. So just it was coincidental because I installed the new version of View last week, and in the release notes they talk about um, adding open VDB support in View. <clears throat> yeah, open VDB. No, that's okay, Android Dust. So yeah, I just thought it was interesting how after you putting that in, in chat and then me reading through the release notes of uh, the new version of Vue that you can work with open VDB files in Vue now as well, which is cool. Because that software looks um looks really useful, really interesting. Again, if anyone wants to know what we're talking about, jump on the Discord server. There's a link to what we're talking about in Discord. <clears throat> yeah, do try out Vue. View, views are really useful. It's a good good software if you do a lot of environment rendering. Okay. Texture settings. See now that now that I've re-rendered the texture, I've got this option called texture settings. I'm telling it to export the textures, but it, it defaults to a PNG. I'm going to tell it to export. Uh, as a JPEG. I'm not going to export the alpha. Uh, I'm going to export to a single texture. Uh, I'm exporting to a single texture. I'm going to make it an 8K texture. Okay. Uh, the reason it didn't export the texture last time, again, was because I cleaned the model, but then I didn't re uh, restart the retexture of us. Uh, 
process again. <coughs> it's, it's exported our model, so now if we jump back into Max, I'm just going to delete that one and re-import it. Statue. Import. Uh, it's going to be quite a few polygons. We haven't done any cleanup on it yet. <clears throat> I can see already it looks like it, it's at about 9 million polys, I think. <clears throat> Let us rotate it around. And rotate it around. And let's pull it out so we can have a look at it. <clears throat> and you can see the results you can get from uh, Reality Capture. Uh, what I'd probably do is with the texture map, I'd change the... Uh, I'm just going to change the material type here from a blin to a Orion Naya blin. That just uh, it's it's good for anything that's um, not reflective, like stone, because stone really shouldn't be reflective unless it's wet. But like I said, you can see you can get some quite good detail, and that's just with an 8K texture. And you, if we look at the texture map, it doesn't really do great UV mapping. Uh, but we can just re-UV map it if we need to. I mean, this one is better than the last one. This one's probably not too bad. But usually, sometimes it'll only UV map half of the texture, so which is what it did for the urn. So there you go. But I think we might have to leave it there for this year, guys. Um, I will be back on the 7th of January, so I do want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, a happy and safe New Year. You guys make sure that you don't drink too much or too excess over the new year and have uh, good luck with all those food comas over the Christmas break. Uh, I will be back again in on January the 7th, 2019. So I'm, I'm going for three weeks. Back on the 7th of January, which is a Monday. Um, I, I, you guys have a great Christmas, a safe, happy new year. And uh, I will see you all again in 2019. Wow, where's the year gone? You guys have a great Christmas as well. Thank you very much, though, for hanging out, for being here, for watching me on our last stream for 2018. We'll get back into things again in 2019, and we'll continue working on uh, this project we've got going now. Yep, I'll see you all again next year. So remember, I'm back on the 7th of January. So... I'm only gone for three weeks, but I'll be back on the 7th of January, back to our normal schedule at 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. You guys have a great Christmas. Happy New Year. Stay safe and well. I hope you get everything uh, that you want for Christmas. And yeah, don't, don't, don't overindulge on New Year's Eve on alcohol. Okay, you guys take care. I'll see you in 2019. See you guys.